Previously, we discussed how we can use bacterial plasmids as vectors, as carriers of recombinant DNA molecules. So we can form a recombinant DNA molecule in a lab. We can then place it into a plasmid and take that plasmid and place it into a bacterial cell. And that bacterial cell will divide and as it divides, it will replicate that plasmid. And so we can produce many identical copies of that recombinant DNA molecule of interest. Now, we can use plasmids as vectors, or we can also use another type of vector, another type of carrier known as a lambda phage. And a lambda phage is a special type of bacteria phage that infects E. coli cells. So it has two types of cycles. It has the lytic life cycle and it has the lysogenic life cycle. Now in the lytic cycle, this is the dangerous cycle that ultimately kills that cell. In the lytic cycle, that bacteria phage essentially hijacks the machinery of that cell, the ribosomes and so forth. And so it produces many of these viral protein molecules and viral DNA molecules. And what it does is it assembles, it packages these viral molecules into these viral particles. It produces many viral agents inside the cell. So it can produce as many as 100 viral particles inside that cell. And when the cell can hold all those viral agents any longer, it essentially bursts open, releasing all those newly synthesized virons to the outside environment. And then those viral agents can move on onto other bacterial cells and infect other cells. So this is the very dangerous and very active lytic cycle. But that bacteriophage, if the environmental conditions are just right, it can take a much more relaxed approach, a much more inactive approach in which it essentially takes that viral DNA molecule and incorporates it into the genome of that host cell. And so when that genome is replicated, when the cell, for example, divides, that viral DNA will also be replicated along with that host genome. Now, of course, eventually, if some type of environmental factor exists, for example, some type of stressful situation, that DNA molecule, the viral DNA molecule inside that cell can essentially be used to once again undergo the lytic cycle in which the cell will begin producing the viral particles and eventually will lyse. So let's take a look at the following diagram, which basically summarizes these two different cycles. So we have the lambda phage that contains that viral DNA molecule. It attaches onto the cell membrane by using these receptors, and then it injects that DNA molecule into the cell. Now, if the environmental conditions are correct, the cell will basically, or the virus, will basically undergo the lysogenic cycle in which the DNA will simply be incorporated into the cell's genome and then the cell can basically live on for generations and as it divides this viral DNA molecule along with the genome will be replicated and will be given to that um, to that offspring cell. Now on the other hand it can also take a lytic approach and in the lytic pathway, what happens is this cell basically turns into a factory that produces many of these viruses. And eventually when the cell cannot hold all those viruses inside that cell, it will break open, it will lyse, releasing all those virons to the outside. And these viruses can then go on and infect other bacterial cells. Now, how exactly can we use the lambda phages as vectors. Well, it turns out that we can actually replace this DNA molecule with a DNA molecule of choice as long as the size of the DNA molecule that we're, we're essentially putting in is about the same as the size of this DNA molecule found in the lambda phage. So what that means is the lambda phage virus does not need its own DNA to actually survive. We can put in any DNA as long as the size is pretty much the same as the size of that initial lambda DNA.
So to see how we can actually do that, let's take a look at the following diagram. So in diagram one, we extract this blue DNA, the lambda DNA molecule as shown in the following diagram. So first we need to cut the lambda phage with DNA with a restriction enzyme. So we choose some type of restriction enzyme and because we're talking about E. coli cell, let's suppose we're going to use a restriction enzyme found in E. coli cells known as ECOR1. Now ECOR1 will essentially cut our DNA of the alpha phage at two locations, somewhere here and here, and we produce the following three fragments. So fragment one and fragment three, the side fragments are also known as the arms. And this is the center of the middle fragment number two. Now, what we can do is we can essentially separate these DNA molecules and then we can remove the fragment number two. And instead of fragment number two, we can place some type of target DNA molecule that we actually want to copy. And we can connect these two fragments onto the sides of the target DNA molecule so that the actual size of the DNA does not change compared to the DNA of that lambda phage that we initially extracted. Now, how can we connect these two fragments or these three fragments? Well, we can use a special enzyme, special catalytic protein known as DNA ligase. So what DNA ligase does, as we'll see in a future lecture, it basically uses ATP molecules to create phosphodiester bonds between the fragments here and this fragment here. And so ultimately, when we mix these three fragments with DNA ligase, we produce recombinant uh, lambda DNA that is about the same size as this original DNA molecule that came from that alpha uh, from that lambda phage. And now we can take this DNA molecule and place it back into that lambda phage and the lambda phage can be mixed in with our E. coli cells. And if the environmental conditions are right, what will happen is the lysogenic cycle will be followed and the cell will basically divide many, many many times and every time it divides it essentially replicates that DNA molecule and so at the end we essentially have a beaker with all these cells that contain many copies of the DNA molecule of interest and so then we can essentially break the cells down and we can extract that DNA molecule of interest and so at the end we have many copies of the DNA that we ultimately wanted to amplify in the first place so we can use these plasmids as vectors and we can also use these lambda phages as vector molecules as carriers of DNA fragments.